I worked with wood for 30 years as a wood carver, and this is just another transition into what I'm doing in the shop here now. But the guitars, you know, every piece of wood holds its own secrets, and in a guitar, you you find those secrets. And different woods have different sounds. Construction of guitars, uh, they construct them all in different shapes, sizes. Uh, the sound holes sometimes are a little smaller, a little bigger. There's a lot of different variables on uh, making a guitar and, and making it sound good. Um, and you know, I, I'm still learning, as uh, everybody does, but uh, it's always a challenge to come in here every day and, and do what I'm doing. I love wood ever since I can remember too, but to take wood and turn it into art, that's what I've been doing for many, many years now. And I try to think out of the box in so many different ways when I'm carving, uh, when I'm constructing, when I'm developing, um, you know, different things, whether it be a life-size eagle chandelier uh, out of elk antlers with an eagle's nest. Um, there's, you know, I've seen a lot of, you know, elk antler chandeliers through the years. I've seen, and most people have, they've seen quite a few of those. But as a wood carver, I thought, well, let's think out of the box on this one too. So I developed an eagle's nest with life-size eagles, one flying down to the nest and babies in the nest and, you know, all the candle lights coming out of the, the antlers. I started making carousel horses um, just from doing some research on how they were laminated because a carousel horse has hollow body construction. And with hollow body construction, you actually have to see the different parts of the horse, how they were laminated before you can start carving that, that bulk. And once I was able to develop, you know, carving a carousel horse and, and uh, you know, being satisfied with what I was doing, then it was getting into restoration because once you've learned how to carve one and assemble one, you can also then take that a step farther and get into restoration. And I have restored quite a few throughout you know, the United States and some overseas. But um, the restoration is so much fun because you're actually working on something that was done over a hundred years ago. And taking an old horse and making it look new, it's so much satisfaction in that. Uh, the restoration, uh, yeah, that's a lot of fun because you're working on something that was carved over a hundred years ago and restoring it back to original condition. But recently, um, in the past year, I got into a little bit trickier things such as guitar making, but uh, I've worked with wood for 30 years as a wood carver and this is just another transition into what I'm doing in the shop here now. But the guitars, you know, every piece of wood holds its own secrets. And in a guitar, you, you find those secrets. And different woods have different sounds. Construction of guitars, uh, they construct them all in different shapes, sizes. Uh, the sound holes sometimes are a little smaller, a little bigger. There's a lot of different variables on uh, making a guitar and, and making it sound good. This guitar here is the first guitar that I made. And this is quarter saw and western cedar for the top of the guitar, the soundboard. And then this is Purple Heart from South America. And the accents are the bindings and even the fretboard is Purple Heart. Now the back of this guitar, if you take a look here, and the sides are curly maple and this wood also laid on the bottom of Lake Superior for about a hundred years. So you can see the, as I turn the guitar, you can see the, the curly maple almost looks like it's got so much depth to it, it almost looks three dimensional. And then the accents through the middle of this neck are Purple Heart. And the, the main part of the neck is also Curly Maple. Uh, now this one. 
This one has a story in itself because this one is made from ancient kari from New Zealand. And that's the wood that's 50,000 years old. That wood has been carbon tested in three countries. The whole guitar is made from that, except for the fretboard and the bridge. That's, you know, rosewood. But, you know, this particular guitar has a lot of special meanings because of the age of the wood. Ancient Kari was found in New Zealand laying in peat bogs and it's been radiocarbon tested in three different countries. And they all agree that the wood is 50,000 years old. You know, it's just so, so nice to work with this. And then, as a wood carver, um, these bindings here, that's maple. But as a wood carver, sometimes it's kind of fun to carve a little something in the, in the neck here. And you know, the old, the old wood spirit seems to work pretty good. You know, sometimes a different sound hole size. But, uh, you know, the, what they call back here is the saddle. And the saddle I'm making from deer antlers. Up here they call this the nut, and the nut is deer antlers, and I use deer antlers on all of the guitars for the saddle and the nut, and sometimes I use it for the, the inlays. And we're in the process of making a guitar now, it's going to be called the Stag, and that particular guitar is actually going to have a lot of deer antlers on the guitar itself, and used in the right way. And that one, we're just starting the, the construction on it now. Every piece of wood holds its own secrets. And in a guitar, you, you find those secrets. And different woods have different sounds. Construction of guitars, uh, they construct them all in different shapes, sizes. Uh, the sound holes sometimes are a little smaller, a little bigger. There's a lot of different variables on uh, making a guitar and making it sound good. Now this particular guitar is uh, made from flamed red birch. Um, the body of the guitar is flamed red birch, however the neck is bird's eye maple and both the neck and the body, that wood had laid in the bottom of Lake Superior for about a hundred years. They logged up there in the 1800s and a lot of those logs sunk and a company by the name of Timeless Timber found that lumber you know at the bottom of Lake Superior and they retrieved a lot of the logs and what's really unique about this is this wood grew you know a few hundred years ago so old wood it's kind of like the Stradivarius of you know that's the sound from the violins were most of it came from old wood and the age of the wood but you know these guitars some of them I'm making is because of the I'm making you know with the old wood. Now this one here, the flame red birch, as I turn this guitar, you know, at different angles, can you see how that flame red birch just some of it sometimes it almost disappears the the color of it and then it comes back. But you know this is such pretty wood. But on the other side of it, the top of this guitar, you know, this, this here is rosewood. And these inlays are abalone shells. They're not the antler. So I do it two different ways. Actually, several different ways because there's a lot of different materials you can use for inlays to make the guitar special and different. Different parts of the guitar and the different colors of the wood I think enhances the look of the guitar and in, some, in a lot of cases the sound of the guitar because um, you know the sound of the guitar comes from how it's made and the wood that you're using. <laughs>